it on the air. It's something we call Bobby's Mailbag. Yeah. Hello. Bobby Bones. I'm fresh out of college. I just applied for a job. Since I don't have the most experience they are looking for, I might have stretched the truth a bit on my previous employment and roles at those previous jobs. I'm a fast learner. I just want to break into my field and I felt like my resume needs a little padding. Is it wrong to lie on your resume or do employers expect that a bit? Should I correct those inaccuracies so it doesn't bite me in the butt? Sign, Jobless Joe. Hmm. Jobless Joe, here's the thing. If your resume isn't good enough, you're not going to get the interview. Once you get to the interview, it's all based on if they like you or not. You don't get to an interview without being qualified because they're not gonna interview somebody that they're just not gonna hire. I'm going through this process right now. I'm hiring somebody new and I've done six interviews. Anybody I'm talking to has the credentials or resume or experience to have the job. But I know in the first 30 seconds if I like the person. I can tell. Been doing this a long time, attitude, um, vibe. That's what I'm looking for. Communication. Don't lie on your resume. Because if they catch you, you will be fired. You will lose your job. If you do lie, make sure it's something that can, can or can't be proved. For example, I once died and came back to life. They can't prove you didn't. Oh, that's a good oh, one. Oh, man. That should get you the job. Yeah, that should. Exactly. They can't argue with that. And they gotta <laughs> they be like, can't argue with this that. This is a special person because that mm-hmm. doesn't happen to everybody. I am known to have psychic abilities. Whoa. Prove I don't. That might be too much. Well, no. Nope. That may freak them out. But you can't prove them. <laughs> right. You can't prove you, you shouldn't lie on your resume. You shouldn't because you may end up losing a job that maybe you'd have got anyway if they find out you were lying on it. And right, lying, you don't have to like make up this whole team where you led them to through this and that and then they put you in charge of leading a team and you're like, okay. Oh, I don't, <laughs> do that. don't know how to manage. Uh, do employers really call and check like your... No. Okay. References? Yes. Not really. What? Not really. They don't? It's for certain jobs, I'm sure they do. I never do. Oh, why? They list them because I don't. it doesn't matter to me. Oh. Like I'm looking at the resume... I have a conversation with them. If I know somebody, I might every, like I interview somebody that Morgan knows and I haven't talked to her about them, but I know Morgan and I know she'll tell me what's up. But if I'm just calling somebody from a list, that's already preset that if they get a call, they're going to give a good review. Yeah. Gotcha. So I don't really trust that. But what about past employers? Like, oh, you used to work at this company. You call them up like, what do you know about Joe? They legally can't say Joe sucks. Uh, they legally can only say, I don't have anything to say right now. But no, no one's ever done that. Anybody I've ever called, they only list places. I know people that haven't listed jobs because it went so bad. So you wouldn't call that job. Yeah, I got a friend of mine that does that. Mm-hmm. That got job. fired from a lot of jobs. Prison. No. <laughs> don't call them. So if you're getting interviews, you've already got there. Don't lie. Just build your resume. Like Literally. Build your resume with little cool things that you can add that get you to an interview. And then once you get into an interview, keep eye contact, smile, and let it rip. People just want to be with people they like in personal life and professional life. That's it. People want to be with people that they like, that make them feel better, and that are qualified to be there, personal and professional. The whole key to life and business is relationships. Business for sure. So uh, be honest about this one. Unless it's, I died and came back to life. That's a good one, man. <laughs> or I'm psychic. Yeah, all that. They, they can't prove it's not true. Uh, good job. Thanks for the email. Go get you a job. All right, Jobless Joe. Close it up. We got your email and we read it on the air. Now it's time to close Bobby's mailbag. Yeah. Bobby Bone, come on. We're about to do a draft of the best opening lines to songs. And so... I'll give you one that nobody's going to use. Are you sure? Yes. For example, I don't practice Santeria. Yeah, what, what's that's, on my list? That's the opening line. Everybody knows the rest of it. All right, that, that would be what song? Santeria. Santeria. By Santeria. Santeria. Right. <laughs> I won't give you any more because I don't want you guys to take it. Okay. This is a tough one for me. Uh, okay, how about this? Dearly beloved, we have gathered here today to get to this thing called life. Uh, that's Prince. Prince. Let's go crazy. Ah. That was my pick. Oh, sorry, man. No chance. It was on a list. Those wouldn't be the songs we would use. I've grabbed some from a list too on the internet to do examples. <laughs> um, so let's go. Opening lines of songs. We'll do the draft. Amy has the first overall pick. Yes. We will do that next. Bobby Bones Show. Uh, the Bobby Bones Show. Best opening lines to songs. 
Amy gets to go first, and I go last the first round. Are you ready? Ready. Go. Blame it all on my roots. Dang it. I showed up in boots. I think everybody had that. Oh, really? If they got the number one pick. Yeah. I thought I was being clever. With, with, the most with friends <laughs> in low places? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People that don't even know country music know that. So. Oh, yeah. man. All right, that's a good one. I'm in trouble. Good solid pick. Lunchbox. Yeah. Just a small town girl. That's good. Living yeah. in a lonely world. Oh my she God. Took that's the not the midnight. opening line. That's it. That's it. No, okay. that's you get, no, you get living in the lonely world. That's the whole. That's the sentence. That's a different sentence. She took the lon- opening line. When I line. Googled it, th- they said this was the opening line. You said the opening line. You don't get the opening two lines. Opening line. Oh, when it, you Google it, that gives you, they nah, say that is Google. the whole line. I hate those Googlers. All right, Eddie. Gosh, this is tough now. I'm going to go with somebody once mm. told me. You can do the world is going to roll me. The world is going to roll me. Okay, cool. Perfect. That's Smash Mouth, baby. That's good. Morgan? This one is so iconic, it only needs three words. Let's go, girls. Good one. Oh, that's good. Dang. Think about that one. Mm. Oh, now I'm in trouble. (laughs) Let's go, girls. That's really good. I have long lines. Let's go, girls. Okay, I'm going to go. I hear the train a coming, comma. It's rolling around the bend. Dang, dude, that's so good. I had that one, but that's two lines. Is that Folsom Prison? Yes. Yes. Dang it. That was my next one. All right, so I get to go first in the second round since I went last in the first round. And I'm going to go with... Now, this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. Wow. So we can do theme songs. It's just songs. Best opening lines of songs. That's really good. good. Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Mm-hmm. Huh. Like you may have opened knows something that. up there. That's good. I may have opened something up in your head. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Morgan. Oh yeah. Okay. Um. Hmm. There's one I want to do, but I can't say it correctly, so I don't think I. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna go. At first, I was afraid. I was petrified. That's good. That's really good. Yeah. Gloria Gaynor, I will survive. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, dang, I got a good one. Just popped in my head. Go ahead. So, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. Spice Girls. Wanna yeah, be. I want to be. That's good. Lunchbox? Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. That's it. Some people call me the Space Cowboy. That's good. Some okay. call me right. a gangster. Were you Googling love. right then to find one? No, I have that on my list. That's okay. the Joker by the Steve Miller Band. Lunchbox, that's, that's okay. really good. That's why I was, he was on his computer, so I was like, what's he Googling right now? Well, I, I, I have to eliminate whenever you guys say one. And I'm got like, it, got it. Amy? Picture perfect mem- memories scattered all around the floor. Do, you want to sing it for us? Picture perfect memories scattered all around the floor. I had to hear that. Too. Actually, it's Lady A, right? Need you now. Need you now? Okay. All right. It's tough. It's mm. good. I didn't say it wasn't good. <laughs> Amy has blamed it all on my roots. I showed up in boots. And picture perfect memory scattered all around the floor. Steve. Dang. Amy, your third and final one. It's so hard for me to choose. Don't know that song. It's so hard for me to choose. Okay, uh, tumble out of bed and stumble to the kitchen, pour myself. Wow, well, that? It's just in the line. kitchen. I thought that was a comma there. It's a period? Okay. I'm all out of bed and I'm to the kitchen. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, That's nine to five. Lunchbox. Man, I don't know if there's a comma in this one. Just give it a rip. Well, I don't want to use it if it's not a comma. Because but it doesn't matter. We're just trying to make sure people don't cheat and do two lines. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, give I don't know. We'll tell you. No, because if it is, I don't want to use this song. Well, if you think it's not good enough. No, should... it's good enough, but I think the... the... Oh, my God. Check this song. All right. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. <laughs> da, da, da. That That's is enough. Joy to the world. That's all yes. you need. My three dog night. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> on the voting, you're just gonna see the first line of the song. So it's right. gotta be so known by just the lyrics of the song. Yeah, I didn't. I can't tell you it right now. I'll tell you afterwards, and you can tell me if it's the first line or if I had too many words on there. Eddie. Oh man, I've got like four to choose from. Which, by the way, lunchbox's list is. Just a small town girl living in a lonely world. And then some people call me the space cowboy. And then Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Eddie? Willie, don't let me down. Give me on the road again. 
on the road again. Is that where it ends, or can I go? Comma. Just can't wait yeah. to get back on Fine. the road again. Yeah, okay. Good. Starts with the chorus. Yes. To me, that was the strength right there. Let's go with whatever the name of the song is. If it's the first line, do it. Morgan? Okay. I have so many good ones. Way down yonder on the chat. That's a good one. I forgot it started like that. <sighs> yeah, that's a good that's one. a real good one. All right, Morgan has Let's Go Girls. And at first I was afraid, I was petrified. And way down yonder on the Chattahoochee. Okay, my final song. I can talk it out. So I was going to do, so no one told you life was going to be this way. Clap, 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 clap. You get to I think you have two there. show theme songs. Yeah, why not? That's what Who he cares? wants. Oh. That's why. I mean, it's like super known. True. See, I had whatever happened to oh, predictability. Oh I'm not he done, dude. You, you should do but Amarillo He's doing all TV Morgan. songs. Of course that's on there. Why would you give an option? That's yeah. on there. It's not on Bones, there. Is it on your list? No. no. Full House wasn't on your list? Mm -hmm. Eddie. Hey, uh, take that out of the bit. Yeah. Of the bit. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah, that's kind of dumb by Eddie, but I don't like that anyway. I'm going to go. I yeah. like big butts and I cannot lie. Oh, I have that. Oh, dang. It's good. Star makes a lot. Yeah. Damn, that wasn't on the, on the list. I didn't pull all mine from the internet. Yeah, well, we, see, I, that's I my problem. About. Is I struggle with music, so I don't know how songs start or how songs go. Mm. And so, like, that's why when you say, "Oh, that's not the first line," that's too much. I'm like, "Well, I don't know where the first line stops." I think that'd be an English language thing more than <laughs> like, like, like one of the ones. Oh, I yeah, had, what was the one? It was you shook me all night long. It goes, she was a fast machine. She kept her motor clean. She was the best damn woman that I ever see. But I, I would have let you have that. That's the whole line. I would have let you have oh, that. Dang it! So I, I didn't know. So that's what I'm saying. Like I'm like, oh, so where does it stop? Or I had. I think I that got was my first real six string. Bought it at the five end. Well, that's not that. Don't that. Do that. That, that'd have been. I got my first real six string. Boom, that's, that's it. it. Oh, that's Bought it. it at the okay. five and Glad I didn't go that one. Yeah. So I could have had you shoot me all night long. Yeah, but you went with Jeremiah was a bullfrog. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Uh, okay, go vote Dang. on the best opening lines. Can I we're not, No, we're not putting the, yeah, for you can do one for two. No, okay. no, no, no. We're not putting the songs on there. That has to just be known by the first line. Go vote at bobbybones.com. Don't vote on just the first one. Vote on the entire body of work. And we'll have a winner coming up soon. All right. Thank you, guys. Get your Bobby Bones on. It's the Bobby Bones Show. Thanks for kicking off your day with the Bobby Bones Show. Case 100.7. I screwed up. And when I realized I screwed up, I hung my head in shame. Now I want to tell you what happened. We had a listener that called us late last week. She was not asking for money, which is why I was more than happy to give it to her. She was asking about how people feel about teachers going, hey, do you mind helping me with my Amazon wish list? And I was like, don't be embarrassed. People don't have to do it if they don't want to. And so we talk about what she does, why she's teaching. And I'm like, let me just cover your whole list. And so here's that. Do you have a Venmo? Oh, my gosh. See, here we go. Oh, my God. I know you're not asking for anything, so I don't mind. I don't, it, I, don't, don't, don't say it on the air, but if I put you on hold, I'm just asking if you have a Venmo or PayPal. Which one do you have? Um, I have Venmo. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> How how much is your whole list? I don't know if I can do the whole list. If it's like a million dollars. Yeah, do you already have it put together? You need me to build your whole school. I can't do that. <laughs> um, I, I do. Okay. How much? Um, how much I do you need? Go, I, I don't. I don't want you to pay for all of it. It was about four to five hundred dollars for everything book. Um, okay, I'm gonna send you five hundred bucks. Yeah. Leave, leave. I'm gonna have them leave oh your Venmo. God. Don't hang up. So she leaves a Venmo. I send her five hundred bucks, and I go look at it, and on Venmo there's a little box where you can write a little message back, and I'm like. I figured that you click the heart or say thank you or something. I sent it to the wrong person. No. Yeah. See? So here get this. No, what do you mean? Here we go. <laughs> now you're gonna do another five hundred. Already did. So you get so the other five hundred. No, because listen, <laughs> you got you got to say fraud alert. You got to hit Venmo. Tell them. So this is what happened. Oh my gosh. I sent her the money. I was happy to do it. I'm blessed right now, so I'm happy to do it. And I love what she does. Thank God we have teachers that actually want to make differences. Because you could become pretty apathetic in that job. I get it. So I send her the money. I go and look to make sure she has it. And they do that thing where it's like the last four digits of her phone. I don't know her phone number. I don't know her. I just know she's a teacher. <laughs> so you just say confirm. Yeah, continue with what that. What else would yeah. I do? I, I'm not, I don't know her number. Uh, hey, Abby, can you can you tell me the last I, four digits did. of her number? Well, no, I don't know if Abby knew it. Oh, she called our phone line. <laughs> I had her Venmo. I typed it in. <laughs> mm. Boom. Send her 500 get no message back. I'm like, well, that's weird. 
I think she was like, hey, if he sent it, it didn't come like a day later. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, Venmo must be broken. So I go and look at the name. I'm going to say this isn't it. I'm going to say her name is Wilson with two L's. It is never spelled like that. But let's say her name is spelled Wilson with two L's. Wilson with one L is what I put because that was the natural guess. <laughs> 500 bucks. So then, oh my gosh. Then I see something on my algorithm on TikTok that's a cop going, hey, if anybody sends you money on TikTok, do not send it back to them. Because what they did is they stole a credit card. They sent you the money. They said it was sent to you wrong. And they get that money back. Then the card's canceled and they just benefited. And I'm like, oh no, I'm not even doing fraud and I'm doing fraud. <laughs> so the person that got the money, I'm going to pull my TikTok up here that has kind of the same name. Oh, I don't know how to TikTok, Venmo. Venmo. I send them a message. And I'm like, hey, I just sent you 500 bucks. This is not a scam. Don't send it back to me. Keep it. If you're having a rough week, I hope this makes your week better. What? And just so you know, it's not a scam. <laughs> Here's my Instagram name so you can see I'm not screwing with you. I hope this makes your week better. And what'd they say? I didn't, get a, I didn't even get a heart or anything. Oh. That's okay. That wasn't the point of it. I'm because sure they think it's a scam. When you say it's not a scam, they all sure think it's a scam. It's a scam if someone sends you money that you don't know. But and that's why I put my name on Instagram as well and was like, hey, and I have like a, the verified thing on Venmo too. So, do you always check your notes on Venmo though? Because I mean, do you, Venmo to me right now with you sounds like social media. Like I don't. My friends put funny messages in Venmos all the time yeah, that yeah, I can't yeah. say. Okay, so that's why you pay more attention to that. The, the girl that I sent it to. <laughs> oh, man. I wrote... It, so I was out a thousand bucks for a five hundred dollars. Oh my goodness. Well, you know, I think you have to look at it that way. She, she, she... It may have help, helped her. Exactly. She somewhere. needed it. And I sent her great. one dollar. You have to send a dollar to send a message. And this is the dollar. I sent one dollar. said, accidentally sent you 500. Keep it. I hope it helps. One letter off. If you're having a bad week, I hope this makes it better. To show it's not a scam, my name is at Mr. Bobby Bones on Instagram. Keep the money. That's what I said. It's under one dollar. Uh, I'm so stupid. Dude, you made her day. I hope. I hope so. I hope she had some bills. She was fighting to pay, and I hope it yeah, helps. Yeah. I hope she's not like some trust fund kid who's like <laughs> another five hundred. I can put it toward a Louis. So that was the situation. When I realized that, I felt so dumb because I missed the other girl Hannah's name by one letter. So I sent her five hundred. I was like, sorry. I think the real Hannah thought I was on the air going, I got you, and not getting it. Oh, yeah. You know that that was probably awkward for her to be like, so I, I don't, I don't, I, if he sent it, I didn't get I it. Yeah. So that was it. That was part of the weekend. Wow. I had a rest of a good weekend, but uh, hit us up if you want. 877-77-BOBBY. Questions, comments. I've been helped so many times. Hopefully that mysterious Hannah needed it and his help too, you know? Oh. It's time for the good news. With Amy. Tell me something good. So there's a woman, Jess Haas, and she was diagnosed with chronic kidney failure late last year. She was put on dialysis, and she started sharing on social media uh, that she would need a kidney donation. She was shocked how many people were willing to get tested. A few weeks later, she gets a message from a former sorority sister named Megan Schultz. Megan was a match and is willing to donate her kidney. They haven't seen each other in over 10 years. But I just think it's so special that a decision she made back in college to be in a sorority allowed her to meet somebody that her future self would end up having such a bond with and need. And yeah. The fact that that girl just saw it and was like, uh, yeah, I don't really know her that well anymore, but let's uh, give her a part of my body. Yeah. They've had an emotional reunion. The journey has started and the transplant is scheduled for later this year. There is a writer, I'm a big fan of him, um, sports writer, and we had him on 25 Whistles, our sports podcast. His name is Jeff Perlman. His wife was at a coffee shop, saw on a, like a flyer, somebody needed a kidney, gave him the kidney. Wow. Didn't know the person, just saw, just saw on a flyer, gave, yeah. gave him the kidney. And he's like, we didn't know them. We didn't meet them for years, but now we know them really well. But she just saw it on a flyer. I think she's a very giving person anyway, because she, I think she works in like uh, helping kids. Okay. Like, uh, uh, what's your social worker? Social worker. Yeah. 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 So, uh, Eddie wants to do I, it. I wasn't going to say anything, but God, that'd be so awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do yeah, something it, like that. It would be. But I'd I, like to do it someday. Yeah. I mean, That's you can do it say. like, I mean, but these girls, once a sister, always a sister, Delta, Delta, Delta for life. I don't know the sorority, <laughs> but. All right, anyway. Uh, there you go. That's what it's all about. Bobby's Big Stories. The latest on the Donald Trump assassination attempt. Now, this is as of now. Things are fluid as they have been. 
the former president is fine after a bullet pierced the top part of his right ear. One man was killed. Two others were critically wounded. In a post, Trump said, quote, I knew that something was wrong. I heard a whizzing sound, then shots, and immediately felt the bullet. End of that quote. What I think a lot of people don't know because the internet is so conspiracy filled. Mostly it's Facebook and Twitter now. When they were like, he was hit before the shots rang. Yeah, that's called what happens with a gun. It travels faster than sound does. Mm. And so anyone that's ever had guns (laughs) realizes that. If you see someone shoot anything from far away, the sound is the last thing that you hear. Uh, So the guy's name was Matthew. It was Thomas Matthew Crooks. What was also wild was people were falsely identifying another guy. Oh, man. The guy was like, that wasn't me. Uh, He was 20 years old from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania, an hour south of Butler. He was killed by a Secret Service sniper. Now, I'm just going to read news. I, this show is not a political show. I do. I love politics. We don't talk about it on the show. I want this to be an inclusive place for everybody, which is why we don't talk about it on the show. This is bigger than politics, so I'm just going to read the news as is. And we're not going to even offer this on social media because it gets really ugly. If I were just to go, there are two presidential candidates. It's, so just know that I'm just reading the news. Uh, Crooks was working as a dietary aide at a nursing home. He was a member of a local gun club at the time of the shooting. He was wearing a T-shirt from a gun-related YouTube channel called Demolition Ranch. He was a registered Republican. Authorities have raided his home. There's no word yet on a motive for the shooting. So how did he do it, the question asks. He was able to climb to the roof of a building only about 164 yards from where Trump was speaking with an AR-15 rifle. Look at me, a little commentary. It's crazy that I saw videos of people noticing him. Yeah. And they did. That's wild. Yep. People noticed him before the Secret Service noticed him. One guy interviewed by the BBC said that he and other spectators saw Crooks climb the building with his rifle, tried to alert police, but he was still able to fire off several rounds. The sheriff of Butler County says that one local police officer was hoisted on the shoulders of another to look on the roof, but he dropped back down after Crooks, the guy on the top, pointed the rifle at him. That's when he started shooting. The gun was registered to Crooks' father. Police found explosives in his car and his home. That's the news story. What I did that was a bit, and we're a very anti-assassination show here. I think we all kind of agree uh, on that. We're very, that's, we are, it's, it's just, it's terribly sad that this, ha- I mean, it's it's not like the first time it's happened either. I mean, Reagan, his guy, Brady got shot. Not Tom, his Secret Service guy. Oh, James yeah. James yeah. Brady. Yeah. Like, it's happened. It's always been terrible when it happened. Lincoln? JFK. JFK, yeah. Yeah. We were in Dallas and Eddie wanted to go look to see where that happened. It had nothing to do with this. It was like two days before. And I was like, it I was two days before. I was right? like, I don't want to go there and see that. But what happened to me was <laughs> it seemed a bit insensitive. On Saturday, we were in the baseball stadium. There was no cell. And I had posted probably two hours before this. I posted on Twitter a picture of like the game. And I was with um, Terrell Owens and Kane Brown who were playing the game with. I was like, we're at the game. And it wouldn't post because there was no cell. And then like 10 minutes after... The assassination attempt happened. My picture posted. I didn't realize it. I thought I posted two hours ago. And then I was getting hit up like, hey, do you realize there was an assassination? Like, toned it. And I'm like, oh, my God. That went across at the exact wrong time. <laughs> oh, man. So I deleted it. Yeah. Yeah. It was not the move for me, I guarantee you. Um, so Trump was playing golf the next day. So happy that it did not and it was not as bad as it potentially could have been. Because it was very, very close. But that's the news. I'll move on without giving any more opinion. Uh, Richard Simmons died at 76. You know, I I guess I wasn't sure he was alive. He went missing for a long time. And I think he was sick too. Yeah, he went missing a long time where people wondered if he was alive. Then he came back yeah. quickly and then he died. Yeah, I'm with you. I think if we had played uh, Alive or Dead, I'm not I'm not sure I would have known, but mainly because of the missing and the, like Eddie said, the, the illness. But he... I used to do his workouts Massive when I was needs. younger. Really? Like, Massive. Yeah, because my mom would have them. culture and, icon. Uh, he was just a lot of fun. And then I, behind the scenes, I think a lot of stuff I've heard about him is just how kind he was and wanted to his fans. And like he would call them and encourage them. And if they weren't feeling well, he just wanted to be a source of encouragement for people. He died. Shannon Doherty died from mm-hmm. Beverly Hills 90210 at 53. Mm-hmm. She had been battling breast cancer for a long time. Her publicist confirmed that she died on Saturday after many years of fighting the disease. 
Uh, Dr. That. Ruth died. Oh. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah, three people. Dr. Ruth died, too. Um, yeah, so. Um, Dr. Ruth was, like, almost 100, though. Yeah, she was old. And, like, she was, like, old even when she was wildly famous and she would do, I'm Dr. Ruth. Yeah. Let's <laughs> talk about sex. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jelly Roll performs a pop-up show after the Morgan Wallen show was canceled. So, Friday afternoon, Morgan Wallen canceled a show in Tampa, said he was sick. So, Jelly Roll was going to be playing that show as well, I believe, as, like, the main support, if I'm correct. And then was like, well, let's just do something. And so, they found a club, and anybody that had a ticket could come up, and he did a show for those people. That's so cool. Super cool. That's from the boot. Jelly Roll stepped it up on Friday night. Oh, this story's tough. I'm going to gingerly talk about this and I'm going to ask the peanut gallery table over there to hang back on comments. You got it. Because you guys Amy, will you sometimes that? get me in trouble. Amy, you're good. Oh. A furious wife has hacked off her husband's penis after he allegedly said another woman's name during um, mm -hmm. doing it time. The unnamed couple who were in their home, the husband said the other woman's name, his wife went into a rage, waited for him to fall asleep and then took a knife from the kitchen. No. This is so terrible. This is from Daily Mail. This is terrible. Police shared images, which I did not click into. Neighbors rushed to the screaming man's aid and took him to the hospital. Local media reported the doctors tried reattaching it, but were unsuccessful. Uh, oh. The furious wife told police, my husband was saying his mistress's name, not mine. I was influenced by alcohol, but I knew what I was doing. Well, there you go. She has admitted to the act. And do you have to give permission act. for the police to release those photos or is it not? That's yeah, very you? private. <laughs> right? Oh, that and they said they couldn't fix it? No, they couldn't reattach it. Oh my goodness. Uh, Kevin Costner's <laughs> next Horizon film is canceled. Wait, what? The Dang. first one, Mike D said did not do well. So the second one, they went ahead and, and no more will hit. But he yeah. put all his money into you. it and did the whole... I know. Okay. So the Hollywood Reporter says Kevin Costner's Horizon and American Saga Chapter 2 won't hit theaters on August 16th as scheduled. That's a bummer for him. I never saw the first one. <laughs> Didn't either. That's from Vulture. That's, so it'll never be seen? Seven. But it's done, right? Yeah. They'll make more money by not putting it out and writing it off at the total loss than they will by putting it out and making any money. I mean, I know you've shared stuff like that before, like why the why a movie company would do that with a movie. Let's say they're but only going to make one-fifth of the money that they put into the movie. When they put it out, all costs. One said so they're going to make one fifth. So it's a hundred million dollar movie. They're going to make twenty million. They can do that, or they can write the whole hundred million off and basically save fifty million on taxes when they pay their taxes. So the easy thing is don't put it out, and you're plus thirty million than if you'd have put it out. Oh, oh that's going to be heartbreaking for him. He seemed very passionate about his project. He did. Yeah, he put a lot of money into it. <laughs> yeah. That's the news. Those were Bobby's big stories.